And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Guess what you're watching? You're watching Adult Hollinet News, the only news you'll ever need because you have no other choice. And please don't run away. Don't hide your children. I know I look a little funny right now. Looks like I may have just came from diving in the ocean of the boob, but I promise you, I look this dang good for a reason. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll let you take a little peek under the hood to show you how the sausage is made here inside the Kyber Club Studios. But we have the boss nest kit reveal. It's why we're here today, not to see my sick headband and my little fro going on here. Boss Nass, as we said, got a little out of the bag a little early. And as we guesstimated, he's going to be the first Gungan coming. But let's just say I think it's going to be a while till we really see like a full picture for these Gungans. So come on over. Let me. I'll, I'll give you a little sneak peek. So I was just about to record for the, the awesome little cool Bane video that we have planned out here. And this is just a pain in the butt to take off. So I was just like, you know, I'm not going to take it off and put it back on. But here you can see how, how we do things here in the Kyber Club Studios. Bah, 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 bah. I bet you didn't think I looked this damn good behind the scenes, though. All right, enough about me. Hope you enjoyed a little bit of that. Uh, <laughs> That's why sometimes I don't show you guys behind the hood, because sometimes the, the get art, it's not always pretty. The, what happens behind the scenes? Like, imagine watching a Marvel superhero movie without all the effects. It's just a bunch of weird people jumping in front of a green screen. You know what? I paid to watch that. I changed my mind. I want to see more <laughs> of that. Anyways, Boss Nass Kit Reveal. Light side shield generator is a really cool mechanic. I like what they're doing here. However, kind of like what we outlined yesterday when we saw the cat got out of the bag a little bit early from Capital Games' marketing team. I'm not sure if we're going to see a lot of good stuff day one. Uh, I said maybe there's a chance there's a Galactic Republic tag. They did not add that, but he does have a lot of good, like, you know, catch-all abilities that are maybe nice to have that we can maybe play around it, but this is definitely through and through a Gungan faction lead. <laughs> wow, Arnold, <laughs> your insight's amazing. I know, right? <laughs> I laugh at myself so you guys don't have to. See, I'm doing you guys a favor. Anyways, uh, this is going to be coming out tomorrow. Mark events. We will be doing some testing, but we definitely got to keep things uh, you know, a little tempered. You know, It's not going to be like Hunter where we could use Hunter in a variety of Galactic Republic teams, clone teams, all that fun jazz. I don't know if we're going to quite see that here. So, we have Battlefield Naboo for the first marquee event, and there's going to be subsequent marquee events for the next Gungans over the next couple of weeks here. We have this new sh kind of a shield generating thing. I think it's we've seen it inside of the ships, but it's going to have its first appearance inside the character side of the game. And why don't we just go ahead? Oh, we have a oh, new. I actually missed this. Uh, we have a new marquee structure, apparently. I missed that. Each tier has both initial and daily rewards. So be sure to come back each day. Ooh. All right, um, hmm. we'll have to wait and see what that's about. I did not see that through the first tactical scanner review. So hopefully this is a good thing, not a downgrade from the, the Mark Evix. It's just nice to do the event once, you call it a day. Hopefully it's not like a login counter. If you missed one day, you miss out on a character. So we'll have to come back and check that out. But this is kind of our first indication about the Jar Jar requirements. Boss Nash will be required, like we predict with the other Gungans. Relic 5 minimum. Oh, a little unfortunate, but this is the new era of Star Wars Galaxy Heroes, where most legendary characters are going to be a high relic. So it's going to be kind of similar to, you know, I guess, you know, the Grand Inquisitor in terms of relic requirements. Hopefully not the same in terms of difficulty. All right, let's go to the basic ability. Bosses command here. Inflict offense down the target. I mean, see, I, I, like, I like the little cool shield generator I have. It's kind of like, you know, a spawned unit almost. Inflict offense down on the target enemy for one turn and call another random Gungan ally to assist, dealing 30% or more damage. And then during Boss Nass's turn, he recovers 30% protection, gains 10% max protection, which goes up to a stack maximum of 100% until the end of the encounter and inflicts vulnerable on target enemy for one turn. Remember, vulnerable should allow you to get more critical hits out there. So long as you can, there's no crit damage immunity or some sort of anti-critical damage mechanic in there. Well, here we go. Moving on to the first special ability, the Bombad Favor. Cool down of three. So this spell all deals on Gungan allies. It's kind of a bare minimum that you need for most modern teams. There needs to be a cleanse. There needs to be a buff to spell. There needs to be like a swarm attack, something like that. So we have a mass cleanse on the Gungan allies and they gain 25% Terminator and Retribution for two turns. That's kind of gnarly right there. Allies recover 20% protection. And if there is any active ally shield generator, that dude over there, remove one stack of recharge from it. And then it'll th make more sense as to go along. Just, you know, just baby step, baby steps. Duncan allies gain additional benefits based on their role. So kind of 
you know, it's kind of like, you know, what Leia does or in Dash Rendar, you know, something like that, where if you're an attacker, you get critical damage up for two turns. So I'm assuming they're going to do damage. I don't know how much damage. Tanks are going to taunt for two turns. That's a big deal. Getting someone to taunt repetitively is also kind of another modern day thing we need in Galaxy Heroes. Support and healers are going to get speed up for two turns. So that should affect this guy who is a support character. So he'll make himself a little bit faster to get all these big plays coming out to the field. It's just a... I don't know. I, I, this is a complete side thought. It's still, you know, I know we kind of had our first indication 2022. This was going to happen. It still doesn't feel real. feels like I'm dreaming that Gungans are coming. <laughs> and it feels funny. Anyways, we have special two intimidating order. They brought it. You know, we should, I should, you know, we should, we should, we should record that. Let's see if I can record that. Oh my, my head just completely twisted over. Hold on. All right. We'll have to recalibrate here later on. Anyways, intimidating order. Cooldown of four. This is, like, this is a nice ability, so I mean, you know, mass buff this spell is not bad. The spell buffs on all enemies. If an enemy was buffed, remove 25% turn meter from them. If they were separatists, you remove 50% turn meter instead. Uh, yeah, I mean, mass buff this spell, you can't go wrong with that. I mean, doesn't necessarily make you a great plug and play character. You know, Signs have got a mass buff the spell. You know, he, he's kind of fallen to the wayside. But again, having a way to kind of navigate through all the stuff out there is important. And you're going to inflict target enemy with expose for two turns and inflict all enemies with defense down, two damage over time, and a healing immunity on top of it for two turns. And let's get to our unique ability, leader ability. Definitely a beefy kit. Beefy kit that we have. And it makes sense. We're bringing a new faction. There's a lot of stuff that this team's going to need to kind of catch up with the years of being behind. Unique one, the Ankura Resilience Zeta. All right, here we go. At the start of the battle, Boss Nast loses 75% max health and gains that much max protection. We're seeing a, a lot of interesting things uh, like that lately, I feel like. Uh, so it seems like, again, initial impressions, max health is probably going to be the way to go. We'll have to wait and see, but we're not really going to know for a couple weeks until we finally see the full picture come together. At the start of Boss Nast's turns, he gains potency equal to 50% of his current protection percent until the start of his next turn. So let's just wait a little bit. Hold on. Let's just wait a little bit so this hopefully makes a little bit more sense, but that sounds like a lot. <laughs> Whenever enemies are inflicted with speed down, they have a minus 25% critical chance and offense. So it's almost like kind of a, a little bit of a baked in Moff Gideon demoralized in a weird way. You know, but you, if you if you clean off the speed down, it's not going to be a problem. But check this out. If there is an active shield generator, we're going to understand this more. Let's get to the leadership. They kind of flip this around a little bit. Whenever a Gungan ally loses Terminator, they gain 10% of their current max protection, which is stacking until the end of the battle. And whenever Boss Nest inflicts a debuff, he deals true damage to the afflicted target. So that's why we want to get a lot of potency, a lot of debuffs out there. It's going to be kind of like a, a new gun rate. Let me kind of manage it where passively he's going to be helping out. So it's a kind of a nice way of making a, this is not, this is one of those non-combatants. It's not, it's a nice way of making a non-combatant do something that's sort of combative. I guess if that's the best way uh, to put it here, but this sounds like on paper, this could be a very, very durable team. So you want to be very cautious with teams that maybe have any sort of staggers that have any sort of turn meter removal that, that you know what? Again, on paper, it sounds cool. There's just so much we just don't know right now. And then we have the leader ability, Boss of Utagunga, Zeta Omicron, which is going to be a Territory War Omicron, but I'm sure we're going to get other Omicrons for Grand Arena, our favorite game. Maybe they'll even throw like a Territory Battle one somewhere out there, but check it out. This is really where we're kind of getting our first glimpse at to the glue to the Gungan faction here, where straight off the get-go, 30% max protection, offense, 30 speed. Pretty, that's, a, that's a nice start. We're starting off pretty strong right there. So we got the durability, we got some damage, and we got some speed. Kind of, you know, <laughs> core tree of the basics of Galaxy of Hero. Uh, and then whenever a Gungan ally attacks out of turn, they inflict speed down for one turn. As we've said, speed down's kind of important. The way I'm looking at this now, and I could be wrong, but I'm never wrong. I mean, when am I ever wrong? <laughs> don't you dare, don't, don't you dare answer that question. This kind of reminds me of, you know, the remember when we saw defense down for Bad Batch when Hunter counts like, eh, this doesn't that make a lot of sense. It might make more sense, but we're already seeing a little bit here. If you have speed down, you're reducing the, uh, the damage of the opposing team. And when you have a lot of protection, I mean, it's going to take a little bit to work through all of your protection. So we're going to get uh, lots of speed down, sounds like. And the first time each Gungan ally drops below 50% health, they gain 50% bonus protection for two turns and remember bonus protection is based off of your max health so, again max health seems to be the way to go 
I, I mean, we're seeing a lot of max health kind of coming to the free with things like Gideon, with things like Bo-Katan, and this team as well. But check this out. If there is an allied shield generator, whenever it loses a stack of recharge, Gungan allies gain 1% max protection, maximum 50% until the end of the encounter. We're going to talk more about that shield generator here in a moment. And if the shield generator is defeated, so you can actually target it, which makes sense. Gungan allies gain 50%. Terminix are like, oh, crap, we got to hurry up, man. Shields are down. And at the end of each Gungan allies turn, they remove a stack of recharge. And if all allies are Gungans at start a battle, you will summon the shield generator to the battle. So unfortunately, I mean, unless you do boss Nash solo, I don't know. Is the, you think a boss Nash solo could be possible? It's, we're not gonna be able to see a full team of five of Gungans and have the shield generator here. So uh, in Territory Wars, for my Territory War fanatics out there, Gungans gain 50% max protection and another 30 speed. Oof. So what does that put us at? That's like 80% <laughs> max protection and 60 speed. Shoot, man, that sounds like a lot. <laughs> at the start of each Gungan ally's turn, they recover 20% protection and dispel all debuffs on themselves. Oof. So this is basically like a Darth Treya for the Gungans. Uh, I mean, in a leadership capacity, not a unique ability where Trey can passively cleanse when Sith take a turn. Remember how transformative that was? I know it's been a minute, but that was incredibly, uh, that was one of the most important pivotal things when the meta uh, shifted in Galaxy Heroes. So seeing that for the Gungans, and the top of the fact they have other cleansing mechanics is pretty nice. And then whenever a Gungan allies daze or stun, they dispel it, recover 75% protection, and gain four stacks of protection over time, 10% for two turns. Oh man, uh, I think we're gonna start expecting more of these things because otherwise just you get things like Bad Batch, they they somehow always work they or their way through. Who knows? I mean, this is only for Territories. Keep that in mind. So maybe Bad Batch can still have an opportunity inside of Grand Arena to kind of work their way through. That's kind of like, you know, Gideon, you know, Gideon does all those cool stuff, then Bad Batch beats up or, or something simple like that. So you're, I think we're going to maybe see more and more of that because Bad Batch, you can tell CG's got their eyes locked in on them. Imperial Troopers got the first round of beatings. They're like, all right, you, you pass me Bad Batch, stop! They want, they want you to get that 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 crosshair character probably around the, in, in the future. So we have this here, and check this out. Holy crap, man! Oh, jeez. Oh, 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 I'm sure, I'm sure your eyes naturally gravitated towards this juicy 500% defense. But this, the, the shield generator's actually got abilities to click on here. It seems like so the plasma, uh, so the shield generator has a plasma pulse. All Gungan allies recover 100% protection. Oh my gosh. 25% to and have their cooldowns reduced by one. Um, I'm gonna wait. Maybe I missed it when I did my first read through. I don't know how fast this thing is, uh, but shoot, man, that's uh, this definitely gives the vibe that you want to destroy this thing as fast as possible. Otherwise, you got a lot of stuff to work through here, and it's got a unique ability that that, that just works. This was the basic ability, so 100% protection cover. Yeah, every single time it gets a turn. Yeah, that's not bad. Big Bombad shielding. I love that. I'm glad to bring the Bombad in. The shield generator has 10 stacks of plasma shielding, which can't be copied, dispelled, or prevented. And whenever it takes damage, it loses one stack. So I'm uh, guessing, you know, maybe just like a quick swarm attack. Boom, you blitz it down. And that it's on paper, it seems like it's easy to beat, but uh, there's probably going to be a catch here. So when the shield generator is active, we get 500% defense. Oh my gosh. Immune to critical hits. Takes reduced damage from percent health damage. So this makes sense. This is kind of basically, it sounds like a B1 battle droid uh, type of thing, uh, you know, almost. Um, but dang, immune to critical hits. That's nuts right there. It takes, yeah, some plague doesn't work. Uh, damage over times won't work. Is there, are, are we calling Lord Vader counter potential? Gungans? We need another Lord Vader counter, don't we? And then we have a plasma shielding. While shield generator has this, its allies gain these bonuses right here. But we're not done yet. We have the unique ability, Pride of the Grand Army. The shield generator has no health or protection and can't be defeated or destroyed while it has plasma shielding. So hold on. So Eva, so is the shield generator considered a Gungan then? Uh, the shield generator has no health or protection and can't be defeated or destroyed while it has plasma shielding. Oh man. Uh, while all stacks of plasma shielding expired, the shield generator is destroyed. The shield generator is immune to buffs and debuffs and its max health and max protection can't be increased. And then the shield generator, so all right, so maybe when I'm looking at the stacks, but it says whenever it takes damage, it loses one stack. So that gives me more B1 vibes rather than Dark Trooper vibes, because Dark Trooper can take a few hits before it loses the stack. Anyways, it's going to be a little complicated. We have to wait and see it in action. It's going to be a few weeks, but you know, it's it's a lot going on here. The shield generator has 50 stacks of recharge, which can't be copied. This build, over Venom, when it loses all stacks of recharge, it gains a bonus turn 
<laughs> it gains another 50 stacks of recharge. Recharge just, you know, take a bonus turn when all the stacks expire. Man, oh man. So, again, uh, let me read this last part here. This is just your usual summon thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only can be summoned if there's uh, to, if the slot's available. Okay, so nothing uh, too new here. Uh, that's basically like the turret for the uh, arc troopers. So, if I'm understanding this, again, we have to wait and see it in action. My guesstimation is that this doesn't have a set speed. It's only going to take a turn whenever it loses all of its uh, stacks of recharge. It'll gain a turn. You do the basic ability, stack up on the protection, 25% turn to reduce the cooldowns by one. So it might be just one of those where it's not going to do a lot, and, but then it will start doing something pretty big. So, man, uh, this is a lot to take in. And there's that little uh, the image we saw from the, the leaked TikTok ad. But now we have it here. So it's cool to see we got a little heads up. And again, Wednesday Kid Reveals are a little bit odd. It's not, it's, it's definitely the exception, not the rule to all this. Overall, I mean, I'm pretty excited about this. This seems to be a very unique fact. I like when they give each faction their own unique identity. Like Tuskins have a very predetermined thing that's very uniquely Tuskins. It's nice seeing uh, Gungans are already getting something kind of unique to them. And obviously, guys, we got four more Gungans coming around town. So there's going to be a lot more to the puzzle that we've just yet to realize here let me just again in case you you missed it here uh going back to the february road ahead of course we have jar jar binks but we have all these other guys here we have our tank we got our attacker we have another attacker we got jar jar binks here i love the, the, the my favorite theory that's been floating out there's jar jar binks is gonna be like ditto from pokemon or maybe like where it just copies a random person's kit like how crazy would that be the ultimate gamble it could turn out to be i don't know like a lord vader or it could turn out to be a, a, a chorus of underworld police and obviously you want the chorus on underworld police kit <laughs> i kid i kid just a little bit or you know like in pokemon there's metronome i think clefairy has it i'm pulling my pokemon nerd i'm here where clefairy will just do a random out of all the abilities in pokemon it'll just pick a random one like how funny would that be <laughs> jar jar just all of a sudden pulls the star destroyer out of the sky one out of a thousand uh chance that it happens <laughs> i don't know i i don't know if it can it should be obvious i'm pretty excited about all this stuff here so stay tuned we'll take a stab at boss dance tomorrow maybe you know we can throw him in some light side teams like who knows maybe he'll work with ray until we get access to the rest of the gungans but fear not my friends that's why we have each other that's why you got arnold holland news yes it's the only news you have because you have another choice but seriously shh. i'm just happy to have you guys around here thank you so much for stopping by catch you later alligators and a wild crocodiles and more importantly it's great to be in the empire today Yeah.